Did you know that all it takes is a spam complaint rate of 0.1% to be blacklisted from email? And this is why about 15% of most emails that are completely legitimate never hit the primary inbox. And if you're a business owner, this is a problem because you're missing out on a lot of different people looking at your offers. Fortunately, that's what this video solves for you today. By the end of this video, I wanna help you master simple email deliverability strategies you can do today, stuff that works in a few weeks, but it's really powerful, and even stuff that's more long-term that's gonna compound for a long, long time. My goal with this video is to prove to you that email deliverability, as unsexy as it sounds, equals more clients, more deals, more opportunities, plus the steps you can take to pretty much fully optimize everything in your favor. And frankly, email deliverability is something your competitors are just not doing right now. No, seriously, like go to the Gmail's promotions tab, you're gonna see a lot of your competitors there. So how does email deliverability promise more clients, more customers? Well, let me explain. So for basic maths, let's say you email your list five times a week. Your list of 10,000 people and your open rate's 15%. That means every email you send, 1,500 people see it. And over a five day period, you're getting 7,500 impressions from this. Hey, it's a lot of numbers, I know, just stick with me. Now let's say you implement all the tips I show you today. You do the work once and it continually pays dividends for you every month, 12 months from now, and now you're looking at an open rate of around 20%. You're still sending five emails a week. Now, for example's sake, we're still gonna keep it at 10,000 people, but I'd be pretty pissed at you if you're a client and your list didn't grow after a full year, but we're keeping things simple. All right, anyway, so 20% of 10,000 is now 2,000 impressions because 2,000 people open the email. That's 10,000 eyeballs looking at emails per week and we're not even considering list growth that's supposed to have happened in the last 12 months. So what kind of a difference would it make for your business if you had an extra 2,500 extra people or so looking at emails every single week? Now, I totally get it. These are made up numbers. Not a lot of people have a list of 10,000 people, but this, do you see the point though? Like every little point counts over the long term. And the cool thing about email deliverability, it's like investing, like you invest now and then over the long term, it compounds more and more and more. So long story short, don't sleep on deliverability, watch the end of this video and you're gonna have a really good time. Right, so the first thing you can do today is where you collect your emails. And this is super important because this is gonna be the difference or not between whether your emails land in spam or promotions or if they land in the primary, people open it and they're predisposed to actually open your emails, which has a whole benefit of good stuff if you're sending emails frequently. So as you can see here, this is my landing page. And you'll see the first step that I do here is that when I click this button here, you're gonna see a pop-up. And over here, I'm just gonna put a fake name and this email. And you're gonna see this line of copy down below. It says, yeah, I understand I'll receive daily promotional emails and be doctrinated into Jules's world, what? Yeah, so it's having a bit of fun, but the key point is, is like daily promotional emails, like that's pushing people away. And the fact that they have to click the checkbox to agree to this, you know, okay, I've got the first bit of permission, but the thing is, that's the first hurdle. Like I really wanna make it difficult for the wrong person to come onto my list. I don't want people not opening my emails. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click get the free training and on the other side of this, you're gonna then see my next page. And it's gonna tell them that they need to go check out this email. And I'm gonna show them what this email actually looks like on this page. So it's pretty hard to stuff this up. They're gonna see the subject line. They're gonna see what the email content, what the call to action looks like. And this is the first thing you can do to prevent tie kickers, junk emails, all this clutter that's filling up your email service provider. And when these people don't open, don't click, don't do anything on your list, it's actually really hurting your email deliverability and this is the best way you can do it. All right, so you saw my friend Jules there showing you what he's doing with his list and you might be wondering, why aren't you maximizing the list size, Jules? Like why do they have to jump through all these different hoops? Oh, it's not how big it is, it's how you use it, right? I would say about two thirds of people who opt in are just junk emails. And like I said before, if you're sending Google these signals, eh, it's not that good for deliverability. You only want people who are serious about opening your stuff. So it's something you can do today to improve deliverability, but what's something you can do that's gonna give you more results? What's well, asking people for a reply on your emails. So let me break it down like this. Have you ever had a friend who's so kind, always sharing you drinks, maybe giving you compliments, never ask anything in return, you would think this person's like 
really cool person, right? Like mentally, you have a scorecard, you're like, I can trust this person, I like this person, I wanna see this person again. Well, Gmail has the same score, but for your sending email IP address. I don't wanna confuse you with jargon, but IP address is just basically the license plate of where you're sending from. If you're doing a bad job, they're gonna track you down and blacklist you. That's why you can't just change Wi-Fi networks and think it's gonna be different. Like, it's a process to change. But when Google notices that your subscribers are showing positive intent, like replying to an email, which looks completely legit, and not just replies, but like opens and clicks and forwards, they're gonna mark your report card saying, hey, he's doing a really good job. We should show his emails to more people because it's a real email address. And to maximize your chances of a reply, what's the email that gets the most opens? Well, it's probably the first or the second email. I probably won't do it on the first because I want to give them my freebie. So I typically like to ask for a reply on the second email. Now, the longer this is firing, the more people are opting in, the more chances that people are replying. This thing just compounds over time. Positive single, positive single, positive signal. So what are you asking this reply based question? Well, it's pretty simple. You could just ask, what's your biggest problem or struggle or challenge with thing you solve? Now you're starting to gather really valuable intel. You can use this for different content. You can also follow up the person and potentially start a sales conversation if they really need help. Like if you're super smooth in the DMs, like this is just for you, but you know, if you're not really sure how to do that, that's for another video. Now, the last thing we can do compounds the most over time. And this practically assures that every single time you send out an email, the majority of your list opens it. Pretty much secures a healthy, stable, profitable list. What is it, Jules? It's your reputation. When you've sent good shit for years, people see you in emails, they don't even look at the subject line. They're looking at the name before they open up the email. This is an audience that just like reading from you. But Jules, how does this affect email deliverability? I'm glad you asked. Well, remember more eyeballs on an email equals Google giving you a positive scorecard. Over the long term, more people open your emails because they get to know your name. Positive signal to Gmail. Now, to be fair, this final tip was more of like a motivational nudge to stay consistent over the long term. What's a bonus tip I can actually give you? That being said, look, if you got value out of this video and you think you can implement something today, I'd really appreciate it if you can show me with a thumbs up. An inconsequential two seconds could make a huge difference. Or maybe you just might want to wait to the end until you see this final tip, then you want to maybe, you know, do one of these. And this last one is kind of advanced. I would only follow this tip if you have a sizable amount of traffic coming into your list. But if you're just curious, you know, just come along too, it's all fun. So about four months ago, I helped this YouTuber Hamza build a email revenue engine on the back end. But the brief was don't sell, like he didn't want to come off as salesy. I took a chapter from the book of Andre Chaperon and I basically only made it possible to buy something if you put your hand up, raise your hand, you said, I'm interested to learn more. And even then we didn't even sell you the product. We just teased the crap out of you during those emails. Now I'm a bit bummed that I didn't take screenshots, but we were getting 60 to 90% open rates, five to 20% click through rates. And just so you know, the standard numbers in the info product market world, 20% open rates, maybe 3% click through rates. So really good numbers. Now I know what you might be thinking, you know, like Jules, the sample size of people actually clicking and going into this who want to be pitched, it's not relative to, you know, the rest of the list. Like surely that doesn't send positive signals to Gmail, right? Like if you're getting high open rates and high click through rates with a smaller number of people, surely that doesn't weight the same as your entire list. Ah, you see, but this is where it's not true. I picked up this little nugget from Troy Erickson while I was doing my email list management certification under his program and he explained email deliverability as an algorithm that only looks at percentages, not total relative to your size of list. So if you're sending them down through a sequence and the majority of people are prone to buy, and let's just say you send 100 through and 60 to 90 of those people are interested in saying yes, you're getting 60 to 90%. Well, those are positive signals you're sending to Gmail. Now, can you imagine what kind of impact this would have on your deliverability if you're having crazy high engagement numbers every single day. Every day you're getting a near perfect report card that you're sending across to Gmail. Pretty damn cool. And that's why if you see on Hamza's list right now, every single email hits the primary inbox. All right, so I've covered a lot here. Let me recap what's going on. First thing is to get a checkbox on your opt-in page, and then you wanna send a confirmation email. You don't want those junk email subscribers. Second thing is to encourage people to reply in your autoresponder sequence. I would typically do this on email two. Third is to show up consistently, keep sending emails over the long term. People are gonna associate your name with good reputation, which means more opens. That's good for Google. All right, so now you've got deliverability mastered for maximum profits and open rates. Now I wanna show you how you pour gasoline on the fire and get more people onto your list 
fast. Well, this video here shows you how to write a high converting Facebook ad with ChatGPT. What would normally take about a week or so to brainstorm, write, think about, I can get done in an afternoon and start building my list. We're gonna go check out that video, it's over here.